Hey guys, it's Chris. From cute little octopuses to bioluminescent predators, join me as I show you nine of the weirdest and most terrifying creatures that reside in the Mariana Trench. Number nine, Dumbo Octopus. The Dumbo octopus is not only one that lives in the Mariana Trench, but that we know of, it's also the deepest dwelling octopus in the world today. At first, you might not think much of this particular octopus, mainly because it's only 12 inches long on average. And it has floppy ears, which is why it's called the Dumbo octopus, after the legendary Disney character. But do not be fooled by the Dumbo octopus, it's actually quite capable of handling itself. So much so that when it decides to eat, it actually attacks and swallows its prey whole. They also have the interesting ability to change their size and color at times to help them get away from predators who decide they look too tasty. Either way, this is a creature that many are curious to study in further detail, but they can't because of it living in the depths of the trench. Number eight, anglerfish. Due to the depths of the Mariana Trench, there's no sunlight that reaches its area of water. In fact, to even reach the top, you would still be 36,000 feet below sea level. For the most part, the Mariana Trench is pitch black, with the exception of creatures who can emit their own light via bioluminescence like the anglerfish. The fish itself is actually pretty bony, but on its head is an antenna which has a bulb that glows in the darkness of the water. Since most fish in this part of the ocean don't understand the concept of light, they're naturally attracted to the bulb. The anglerfish will then use its antenna to lure the prey closer and closer to its mouth until it can eat them. Interestingly, the females of the species are not only the bigger of the two, but by a large margin. The female anglerfish can grow to about a foot in size depending on the species, but the males, they only grow to about an inch maximum. And there are multiple variations of the anglerfish, including the fanfin sea devil, which has spines coming out of its body that it can use to detect other prey. And now for number seven, but first be sure to subscribe to Worldless so you can join us and not miss out on any of our latest videos. Number seven, deep sea dragonfish. In the Mariana Trench, there are all sorts of predators. And the deep sea dragonfish is one that would definitely get the nickname of assassin among the other predators of the deep. And this is because of not only how it hunts for food, but rather because of its massive teeth that protrude from its head. Weirdly, despite being a fish, the deep sea dragonfish actually doesn't have any scales on its body. Rather, the long, lanky frame of the dragonfish is slimy, not unlike an eel. Like other fish within the trench, the dragonfish also has the power of bioluminescence, and it uses it to blend into its surroundings at times. And then it'll use a special barbell that's near its mouth to project light. And the moment that the prey is close enough, the dragonfish will lash out and get its dinner. Some believe that the deep sea dragonfish may also use the barbell to communicate with others of its kind, and in doing so, learn to change the color of the barbell, including making it red, which is out of the ordinary in terms of other bioluminescence observed. Number six, zombie worm. No, this is not a creature that's been reanimated after dying. Rather, it's a parasitic underwater worm that's able to bore into the bones of its prey and get all the nutrients and sustenance it needs in order to survive. Now, usually a parasite like this would do the draining through its mouth, but the zombie worm actually doesn't have one. So how does it get what it needs then? Well, the zombie worm is actually a part of a symbiotic relationship with bacteria, and the bacteria actually help bore into the bones of its prey, and then through its own processes, creates or breaks down the nutrients that the zombie worm needs to survive. Typically, the zombie worm prefers to eat the bones of whales or other such creatures. However, they have been found within creatures in the Mariana Trench as well, but they don't just live there either. In California near Monterey Bay, there are said to be 15 different species of zombie worms. And FYI, they're also known as bone worms. Seems logical. Number five, barrel eye fish. One of the most basic uses of skin in both animals and humans is that it prevents you from seeing inside your own body. But with the barrel eye fish in the Mariana Trench, it's a creature that doesn't mind you seeing inside its head. 
Literally. This is a species of fish that has a transparent section of its head, which you can use to see its brain, its eyes, and more. Now, if you were to look at the eyes, you'll notice that most of the time, they're pointed upwards. And the reason for this is that the barrel eye fish actually has the ability to use the light that's around it, which isn't much, to actually see the silhouettes of fish dancing above it, thus allowing it to determine whether a predator is going to descend upon it or not. But that begs the question, why is the head transparent? And scientists aren't exactly sure. However, they believe that the transparent head section is able to absorb light just a little bit better. And because of that, it'll aid the barrel eye fish in identifying the creatures above it. The first barrel eye fish was caught in 1939, and it wasn't in the best shape. Because due to the pressures of the water it likes to live in, the change in pressure as it rose to the surface almost literally crushed it. Now, did you know the Mariana Trench is estimated to be 180 million years old? That's because the Western Pacific is home to some of the oldest seafloor ever discovered. Number 4. Hatchet Fish Named after their body shape, hatchet fish are very, very thin fish, but ones that are perfectly adapted to the terrain of the Mariana Trench. For example, their eyes are very well adjusted to the darkness of the trench. They're able to absorb light in such a way that they can perfectly see what's above them, but their skills with light go beyond that. On their sides and bellies are photophores which actually allow them the ability to blend into their environment by countering the light being projected at them. Through this adaption, they're able to make themselves invisible to all those around them, predator and prey alike. And because they're so thin, they can slip in and out of situations without much difficulty. Number 3. Frilled Shark At first glance, you might not comprehend that the frilled shark is even a shark at all, but rather some type of massive eel or even a sea dinosaur, depending on how you view the head of this beast. Yet, it's a shark, well and true. And it's not as big as most sharks, only growing to about 6 feet long. However, it compensates by having a very flexible body and 20 rows of very sharp teeth. Because they live in the depths of the Mariana Trench, among other locations in the ocean, scientists haven't been able to locate many of them for research. And those that are captured, they just die very quickly once they reach the surface. Due to this, there's a lot of debate as to how the frilled shark hunts. Some feel it attacks like an eel because of its body type, but others feel it might strike more like a snake. Until the creature is studied further, we're not likely to know. Number 2. Goblin Shark Sharks are feared in every part of the world, but in the depths of the Mariana Trench is one called the Goblin Shark, and there's no doubt that this is a terrifying creature to look at. First and foremost, this shark is very large in size, as they can grow up to 18 feet in length. But the true terror of the Goblin Shark comes in the form of its head, which is both misshapen, mismatched, and yet very predatory. On the top of its head is a protrusion, one that looks like a blade in terms of shape. And once you get to the head itself, the goblin shark has a massive mouth with razor sharp teeth. But most importantly, the shark's mouth is able to detach and extend forward. When you look at their color, it's slightly pink. And it's not surprising that not many of these goblin sharks have been captured. And to that end, a lot is still unknown about them. Number 1. The Unknown Some say the most terrifying things out there in the world right now are the unknown creatures and entities just waiting to be found. And when it comes to the Mariana Trench, that fear might just be personified through it. After all, because of the very dense nature of the trench, again 36,000 feet below sea level just to scratch the surface of it, we can't just go down willy-nilly and explore. In the span of time since the discovery of the Mariana Trench in 1875, only three people have ever reached its depths, and all three came back to tell the tale despite issues with their ships. Ever since that point, though, many people have tried to scan and explore the depths through unmanned vehicles and probes. And while there have been successes, there are just as many failures. In some cases, the probe or ship would start out great, and then the water pressure of the trench would eventually crush it before it could return. Due to this, we don't have a map of the whole Mariana Trench, and we don't know just how many species of creatures are just out there in the trench itself. 
All the footage captured below the water hints of what might be out there, but it's not conclusive in any way. And many have hyped up what might be down there, such as maybe a megalodon shark. But until our underwater technology gets even more advanced, we can only take glimpses at the Mariana Trench. And so all that exists there, all that thrives there, will only be partially known. Well, there you have it. Some of the most frightening creatures that the Mariana Trench has to offer. And which ones did you find most terrifying? Do you know of any other creatures that could have been on this list? And be sure, and be sure to subscribe before you leave so I can see you next time on World List.